are today with Gardner Tackle, doing a little video for them. Um, a lot of companies have started bringing out videos now of, of one of my rigs that I invented back in 1987, believe it or not. Um, I've done a couple of videos myself, but since I use Gardner materials, hooks, hook links and everything, it's, no, it's nice to sort of do something for Gardner in, in return for all the freebies they've given me over the years. A uh, little bit of history about the rig. I probably first used it in, uh, in the 86, 87 season, so a long way back now a little place called Woven Sands just down the road. Um, at the time, well, materials I used was, believe it or not, uh, dental floss. That was my hook link. And I used Renan rings. So it was a little bit crude, but it worked, you know. Um, the emphasis really was finding something, you know, for use for bottom baits. Um, I had pop-ups pretty much sussed, and I just had to sort of one day racking my brains and I sort of come up with that one, tried it, caught a few fish on it, I thought, oh, that's all right, it works, at least I know it works. And then uh, over the next few years, I started to get, I don't know, probably a bit too fixed on using pop-ups and I started using all different pop-up rigs. And it sort of went on the back burner. And it weren't until about, I don't know, perhaps about 15 years ago that I sort of pulled it back out of the bag and I thought, you know what, I think this is worth giving it a go, you know, I sort of started going, swaying the other way, using more bottom baits and pop-ups and double baits and particles and things like that, and it just sort of fit, fit in really well. Obviously, with materials changing over the years, I started using coated braid, started using mugger hooks, and everything just sort of clicked into place. I just, everywhere I used it, couldn't go wrong. All my mates used the same, same sort of rig, they couldn't go wrong. You know, I mean, it's caught that many big fish now, I've just lost count. Um, personally, myself, I've had about 10 40s on it. I don't know, 50, 60, 30s. Uh, my mates have had similar results, all different lakes, using sort of, not necessarily garden materials, but a lot of them are. Uh, Nash, Nash stuff and Corder stuff. And, so it seems to work with a lot of materials. Obviously a lot of baits, we're all using different baits. So it must be the rig that's doing the job. Now, the reason I found it effective is I, I fished it alongside two other rods using two different rigs. And over a course of 10 years, it transpired that I was catching 50% to 100% more on the slip D. Uh, now the reasons I think it's more effective I'll explain a little bit later, but I mean, it looks very simple. It's pretty simple to tie up, I think it is anyway. And uh, I'll run you through why I think it's more effective than other rigs. Right, well, before I tie one up, I might as well just talk, for, talk you through the mechanics of, of why this rig is a little bit more effective than what a lot of people think. I mean, obviously I've tied it up with a coated braid. The last sort of inch before the eye of the hook, everything beyond that is all stripped back. So it's all like supple braid. And obviously with a lot of D rigs, if you're using sort of like mono or, or coated braid, the actual D is stiff. Whereas this is supple, which allows the baits to, to come away from, because they're mounted on the ring, it allows the baits to come away from the shank of the hook and, and it just, if carp suck, are sucking and blowing, it just helps hook them, really, you know. Um, quite often the baits will end up right the way, right the way back and there's just no, no return for the carp, really, they're hooked. And that's it, they can't use the bait to suck and blow and, and help reject the rig. So I'll talk you through how I tie it up and uh, then you can try it yourself. Okay, well I'll just talk you through sort of the mechanics and the materials and how I tie it up. So first of all, hook link material. Well that's going to be the ultra skin, 20 pound. What I normally do is, it all depends on what sort of length of hook link you want. But for something like this, about, I don't know, nine inches long, I'll probably start off 
peeling off the, the skin for about five inches. I mean, you can use your teeth or you can use a stripper. Uh, this is pretty tough coating, so you, you generally find it will start wearing grooves in your teeth. So ideally, you want to use a stripper. So anyway, strip off five inches off the end, and then from the, the point where it breaks, you want to cut, you know, cut off say another 10, 12 inches. All depends, really. You know. Once you've tied up a couple of rigs, you'll soon find the, 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 sort of, the right sort of lengths, you know, to save on wastage. All right, so once you've got a length of hook link material with five inches stripped off, the point where it, where it breaks, you line that up on a ruler. Now I tend to sort of like put it on like 75 mil. So when you lay it on a ruler, you've got the break at 75 mil and you lay the uncoated part along the edge of the top of the ruler, bend it over the top of the ruler, and then the moment you lift it off the ruler, you, you'll notice a kink on the hook link material. Now that kink's important. What you then do is you double it up without moving that kink, and then with, with your boiling needle, it's already got a, a rig ring on it, like a three mil rig ring, the large gardener ones. You attach the boiling needle to the loop, then drop the ring down onto the double, doubled up material, and then transfer the sort of like the hook link material into your other fingers, and then you place the, the eye of the hook into the, the loop, and then Hold that loop with your left hand if you're right-handed, obviously your opposite hand if you're the other way around. And then you sort of like drop the ring back down, trapping it onto the hook. So then you've got a parallel section of double back hook link. One, one is going to be your entire hook link and the other section is what I call the tag end. Then you feed the, your first bit through, which is the hook link material the long section, through the eye of the hook. Then you feed the tag end through, and at that point, you just double check that the way you want it sitting is where the, where the, uh, the eye is going to sit is literally opposite the barb of the hook. So once you've got it trapped in your fingers, you then tie off with a knotless knot I normally go four or five turn, turns around, normally five. Not less not. Tighten it all up, and then you'll have your slip D with a tag end. Now I normally apply a little tiny dab of super glue to the top of the, the knotless knot. It's not for any strength reasons, that's just because I like to trim my tag end really tight to the eye of the hook. And then that way when you're not sort of like using it or it's laying on your bed chair you don't sort of like unravel it will stay exactly as you made it and then once you've got the hook hook end sorted out all you do up the other end is tie a simple loop loop knot i, I generally uh, allow for say like a 15 mil loop one simple overhand granny knot pull it as tight as you can and then when simple attachment of putting your swivel on is to put the loop through the one eye of the swivel, feed it over the swivel, back down and then pull it tight and then you've got one entire slip D rig all mounted up. And then all you do then is tie whatever hook bait you want to that ring. Now again, I, I do prefer it with bottom baits, but it's also very effective with wafters pop-ups but one thing I will add is if you are using wafters then ideally you want the bait to sit so the hooks laying flat on the deck not with the point of the hook 
resting on the deck. Because if you're fishing on gravel, then that hook point can, can be uh, wafting around on gravel, which ain't too clever for the hook point. So like I say, if you are going to use a wafter, just try and make sure that the hook's laying flat on the bottom.